welcome to the Media Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. It's the final countdown. Man, that was an old song. I, I remember playing that song whenever I play Final Countdown. The, the card for Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, I was about to say, yes, I play Final Countdown when I play Final Countdown. <laughs> <laughs> and also joining us today is the Terra. This is so emotional, but this is also sad that this was the episode where everyone said that the fandom's going to die, which it didn't. Yeah, the, the, the fandom is just strong. Everyone's been saying the fandom is going to die for years. <laughs> That's also true. Somehow, we, we've reached the point where death is a revolving door for this fandom. Nah, man. It's like one of those um, con places that you go, where you enter the building, and then when you ask... Where's the exit? And then they say, there's no exit. Oh, the Hotel California. Ah, yes. <laughs> so, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review ep- Season 9, Episode 26, The Last Problem. In this epilogue episode, an older and wiser Princess Twilight Sparkle is visited by a student with a friendship problem. As she attempts to solve it, she looks back on the time she and her friends spent together. And yes, this... This episode is the last episode for the series. And in all honesty, this is going to be very emotional. So anyway, uh, before we head into the review, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? I defy your feels. Mm. Eh. But I enjoyed this. Uh, although it really depends on uh, what do you regard this episode as? Is it the honest-to-goodness end, or is it a what-if scenario? And I tend to fall more on the latter. It is but one of the myriad of possibilities that lie before Zipponis. And I'll have thoughts on how everyone ended up in this and the good and the, ba- the, good and the bad of those ideas, but all in all, it's, it's fun. All right, all right. And Tara, what about you? I really enjoyed this. They ended it very well. And I just, I mean, I'm not really too fond of the whole, uh, you're telling a story and then it cuts to a flashback and then they pretty much cut back and forth and it's like, why don't you just make this a full on episode instead of going back and forth? But I mean, you know, they gotta show how they look now with them being older, which kind, which makes sense. But it, it's, in the end, it still makes it all worthwhile and makes you emotional with the song. It, I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> you saying that Terra reminds me of the last episode that we did, when I complained the same thing, uh, and that was recent. That was what uh, the Big Mac thing. What was it again, Silver? The Big Mac, the Big Mac question? question. Yeah, it held, it almost had the same uh, story narrative, and someone in the comment uh, reminded me of uh, the one where Applejack Pirate. Remember that one? What was it again? The Benyip. Oh, uh... I forget the name of that. Episode. Pony point yeah. of view. So it was something similar to that too. So uh, this style of storytelling has it's not foreign to ponies. But anyway, uh, as for me, wow, th- this episode really hits me in the feels. Like uh, it's it's one of those dreaded episodes where you know when you watch this, this is going to be the end. Like we spend almost. Well, no, we spent nine years with this series. And knowing that this this episode is the end kind of makes it, I, I don't know, it, it stands out. It like really pops. I mean, I, mean, I, I can't speak. It's one of those. Mm. Are you getting emotional already? Yeah, kind of. Anyway, um, let, let's just say that I enjoyed this episode. Anyway, um, if you guys have not watched this episode yet... Go do so because it's a lot of fun. Welcome back. So anyway, we start off the episode with, well, kind of um, a fast forward to the future where we get to see all of the happenings or all of the nuances in Cantalot. We get to see dragons roaming around, hippogriffs roaming around, and also yaks. And we get to see uh, hippogriffs and... Did I say if you could progress before? I did, right? You, yeah, you anyway. did. Uh, we get to see griffins and ponies and yaks 
all interacting with each other and not fighting. Especially the dragons. The dragons are really cool. Of course, I know at least one hypocrite who's still persona non grata. Oh, uh -huh. really? No. But anywho, as we carry on, we get to see Spike. Spike is buff. Like, <laughs> uh, the passage of time has been really, really awesome to him. Uh, who ordered the beefcake? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in all honesty, uh, this version, oh man, I, I don't know what or why, but maybe I have this perception of how Spike should look in my head from fan art. And once we get this, it's like, hmm, okay. It's not bad, but it's not what I imagined, but it's okay. <laughs> Uh, well, so anywho, Spike walks in saying that, man, uh, getting the Absinius and the Diamond Dogs to co uh, work together is not easy. And once you remember who the Absinians are, they're Kappa's race, the cats. So it's cats and dog working together. <laughs> so that's going to be hard. Mass hysteria. <laughs> I know. So, and we get to see Twilight. And, oh god, Twilight looks... Um, how, how, Princessy. no, yeah, <laughs> yes, but how, how do I put this kindly to you, Twilight? I know there's a stay at home order and the barber shops are not open, but dang, you should really do something about your mean. You deny her to the chance to go with the flow? Not that look. Oh man, she, she looks, oh uh, man, I, I'm gonna point, uh, put a pin on this because. Uh, Spy goes up to Twilight saying, uh, you need my help? What was it? And Twilight just says, yeah, uh, there's this student of mine. She's, mm, let's just say that she has a problem that, uh, we need to help. And there's a knock on the door and the captain of the guard is callous. Wow. Um, that's out of nowhere. And is he captain though? I guess. I mean, with the armor he's in. But it it's gold armor. It's the armor of all the Canterlot guards. Probably. I mean, maybe the, the wiki just says, uh, get us as captain. Nice one. You're going to trust a wiki for facts. Well, let's just say that... No, man. <laughs> what madness has overtaken you? Ah, uh, the madness of... Uh, I don't know. This episode is just making me sad. Anyway, um, we get to see Princess Twilight's personal student. Uh, what was her name again? Oh man, uh, if I... Luster yeah, it's Luster Dawn. Because after Twilight comes the uh, Oh god, and before Twilight Oof. there's sunset. Uh... Yes, it all comes together. It's the circle, the circle of naming conventions. Uh, it's like poetry. It rhymes. <laughs> Which means she's probably like, so princess, when do I succeed you? <laughs> Wait your turn, Missy. <laughs> oh boy. Well, anyway, we get to see Lester Dawn. And Lester Dawn says, Yo, Twilight Princess teacher. Uh, I, I know you're trying a lot to teach me stuff, but... And the, most of those stuff are friendship lessons. And you know what? Friendship kind of sucks. I, I want to go solo on this. And Spike gasps. And Twilight kind of agrees. Yeah, okay. Let's do it your way then for and, a bit. And Spike gasps again. Yep. And I'm going to pause here. So, guys, what do you think? Silver? Well, first we get to see the diversification of Canterlot, which is something we didn't totally ex see. I mean, Canterlot had maybe one or two guest shots of other beings, like griffins. But now, oh, the borders are completely open and it has expanded. I have to wonder how much more they can build before that mountainside just falls over. What? <laughs> and when you think about it, the mountain inside is a bit hollow because of all the secret passages and whatnot. And then it will all collapse and the tribe will relocate back to Ponyville with the Castle of Friendship at its core. Yay. And thus will begin the Ponyville Empire. Yes, <laughs> headcanon confirmed. Yes, Mare Mare, all of parts, all part of Mare Mare's plan. <laughs> oh, it's his eyes on. <laughs> I forget how they say that. <laughs> All according to plan. Anywho. Luster Dawn. Already commented on the naming convention and the possible symbolism. <laughs> but uh, one thing that's that uh, right off the bat, I guess we could talk about, is 
a lot of folks have run with the theory that she is the child of uh, Starlight Glimmer and Sunburst. Mm -hmm. She has a, <coughs> excuse me, a cutie mark very similar to Sunbursts. I heard that theory before. But what, from what we'll see later, I'm not so sure. I We've seen a lot of uh, ponies with similar cutie marks, usually background characters. So for this one shot, I wouldn't be surprised if they said, okay, let's dust off what we a uh, cutie mark we've used before and start a new one. I don't want to break, we don't want to break the budget on a one shot character. Wait, have you seen this mark before? Have I seen this what before? A uh, cutie mark. On Sunburst. No, th this one really? The same thing? Similar, the shape of the sun. It's just in a half, half uh, rising state. Mm. But it's Sunburst cutie mark, half cut off. All right, all right. Hmm. Budget, budgets, you know, sift the budgets. So it's possible. It's always possible, but I don't think it's a given. Anything more? Nope. All right, Tara, what about you? Well, I agree with um, what Silver said because another thing too I'd like to point out is that usually when someone is uh, like, like a son, like a daughter or whatever, they always take traits from their parents. Like take Applejack, for example. Her body color is the color of her mother's mane's hair. And then her main color is the same color as uh, Bright Max skin color. So they're basically taken after their parents. But when you look at Luster Dawn with Starlight and Sunburst, you don't see a resemblance. So that kind of shows that they're not really um, their parents. <laughs> As we go on, I, that theory of yours is going, is going to be shattered. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> yep. Although we should also consider maybe Sunburst tried to clone himself, but something went awry and now he has a female Sunburst. Aha! Saga, no, yes. no, not a clone saga. <laughs> But I also like, too, how Gallus now has a place because I forget the name of the episode, but it's when they're spending time hearth swarming. And Gallus talks about how he's never really found a place where he belongs. Like, he doesn't really have a family and doesn't really have a place to live. But now with here, he has a place in Canterlot and he's a guard. So he now has a place. I mean, I don't know if he likes it. I mean, look on his face. I'm assuming he likes it. But now he has a place where he can call home, and I'm assuming now he could also spend time with his friends. Yeah, true, true. But one of those things where, okay, I, I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to place everyone in certain locations. But this, for Gallus, it kind of comes out of nowhere. It, there's, there's no indication that he wanted to be a guard or, or aspired to be anything. Like, I, I feel like, this could be expanded in season 10, the comic, but it just feels out of nowhere. What, haven't you ever wanted to randomly join the military? No. Well, okay, when I was a kid, when I was, what, six, probably? Seven? But that was a child's fever dream, but... Uh... Grandpa Gruff probably sent him to military school. Ah. Also, what's this about a fever dream? Uh, anywho, carrying on. Wait, fever dream? And yeah, he said he, he said it was a child's fever dream, and I'm like, but you you dreamed about the military in a fever dream? No, 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 no not going to go there. Were you Cobra Commander? <laughs> I wish. Uh, he was wearing a mask before. He was cool. So, anywho, carrying on. Uh, Twilight tells the story of her day, her first no, not even her first day, but her day of coronation, and we go to a flashback where. Twilight is panicking about moving out of the castle since she's going to stay in Canterlot uh, permanently she's going to pack up and leave the castle in Ponyville which I always question why why, why did you need to do so and stuff but anywho uh, Twilight goes room to room checking if she left anything and she found Spike's Power Pony magazine or comic book and Spike says, yeah, Twilight, I'm not really into comic books anyways. I'm growing up and stuff, so I don't really need a comic book. And here we see Twilight having an existential crisis of her, well, leaving Ponyville. She doesn't really want to, she, she misses the place, it's the place where she grew. So it's one of those things where she's emotionally attached to the place. So, she 
tells uh, well she and spike says okay you know what let's go around visiting my friends maybe uh they are gonna miss me also and i uh, don't want me to go and stuff you know like bonding and stuff so the first one we go see is applejack and once we go to see applejack eh, she's not worried she's doing her job and uh, she doesn't mind uh, twilight leaving because well it's her job and whatnot and so she continues to work she meets pinky and you know what this is going to be the same cycle where twilight visits friend friend not worried friend is happy that twilight is uh, going to be the ruler and stuff would you say that's fair yep it is pretty rhythmic i mean they do each lay the seeds of their destruction oh yeah that's true that is true I don't know, that's like saying, you know, uh, Silver's going to leave the MBS show and he's going to be like, I'm going to see if they're going to be ba the, be sad about it. Be like, no, you, that's your choice. Go on ahead. Oh, and, and, yeah. oh I am going to leave the MBS show. Okay. Bye. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Baby, come back. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, once Twilight visits all of her friends uh, and knowing that they're not going to miss her, it makes her feel crappy. So, she sulks in the castle alone, and Spike, trying to cheer her up, just says that, oh, you know what, the power ponies, maybe, yeah, I, I have to keep this and, you know, maybe I read it. Since this is the first issue of Action Pony Comics, maybe I'll get a really good price of it. Good thing that Shining Armor is not, we're not wanting this issue, because, oof. So... Twilight says, ah, the power pony doesn't care anymore because none of their friends care. Mwah. And talking about friends, Twilight friends, Virgin, saying that, hey, Twilight, you're gonna be late. So, before they could, you know, bond and say goodbye, Twilight snaps at them. Everybody's shocked. And Twilight just says to them, like, oh, you don't care if I leave because... Uh, you, you're more worried about my coronation and whatnot. And the gang admits to Twilight that the only reason that we're doing this is because we don't want you to feel sad because, to be honest, we all are sad. Like, we don't want you to go, but this is kind of your deal. And they have a good cry and hug it out. And I'm going to pause here. So, Tara, what do you think? Oh, well, I kind of agree where Twilight's going because I kind of had those moments where it's like, oh, I'm going to be gone for so long. Aren't you guys going to miss me? But I'm not to the point where it's like, I'm going to drag this along, see if I can actually see what they say. But I know that they'll, because, um, like, I forget who it was, but I know one of them said, oh, just because we're moving away from each other doesn't mean we'll stop being friends. And that's true because I have an example is that one of my friends I've been great friends with. We haven't seen each other for a while, but we still make the time to see each other. Even with, uh, well, I mean, you can't do it now with this whole pandemic, but we still make the time to see each other because we've been friends for so long that friendship friendships never really die down. And Silva, what about you? Well, mostly I'm looking around this castle. It's like, what are they going to do with this thing now? It doesn't have a, the map. Is it still active? I don't know. The Twilight took all the books, so that's now two libraries that have been unintentionally destroyed because of her. Ponyville's literacy is going to go down the toilet. And I do wonder what they're going to do with this huge empty castle. Mm, that's a good question. Hotel, baby. Ask him and Flem to take care of it. <laughs> I can empathize with Twilight and agree with Torterra. There's that feeling of, you know, if I leave, would anyone follow to bring me back? There's always that question. And, but at some point you got to say, I think that's not the way to approach a change because it's like, no, I don't need to rely, don't rely on someone else to drag you back. If you don't want to go, don't go stay and work for what you want. Twilight, however, I, I appreciate that they said she really does want to become ruler. It took her a while to realize it, but she wants this. So it's not a case of her not wanting to go. It's just a case of her wanting to know that it's going to be okay. And we all need that assurance during transition. But the only way to find out is to do it. Harumph. So, so empathetic. I, I do love that she goes through all this and uh, has just a little bit of a blow up. We always need a good twilight explosion. <laughs> 
But I, I will say there's one other aspect with Rainbow and the Wonderbolts. When even when even Spitfire is saying you've made the uh, the routine too complex, that's saying something. But she wants the best for her friend slash future ruler. True, but at the same time, uh, you know, like you're 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 setting yourself up to fail. I'm sorry, <laughs> but but yeah, yeah. True, true. Anyway, carrying on. Uh, so let's see. Yes, uh, after the group. Honestly talks to Twilight and... Wait, did I already say that? The group talks to Twilight, they all burst into tears, they have a group cry. Yeah, I already said that. Okay, yeah. And then Twilight kidnaps them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So, anywho, carrying on. Uh, Spike just reminds the group that, yo, guys, we're going to be late. The train's going to be moving soon. So, let's run to the, st st um, the train station ASAP. So, they run to the train station and... Uh, passed by Starlight. Hey, Starlight. Bye-bye, Starlight. Uh, and the train, they missed it. But no problem because of insert transmission. Toilet teleports them into the train station. No problem. Or, sorry, into she kidnaps the, them. <laughs> into the train. Yes. Into the train, yes. Yes, yes, problem. She kidnaps them. They did not want to go on the train. Yeah, yeah she did. did. She forced them to go on. It is, a, it is an illegal abduction of their... Uh, personages. No, man, it's like she's uh, taking her friends to uh, the same place that they all want to go. I mean, it's all legal. It's all legal. But no, I mean, it's, uh, it's not the least bit legal. It is, it is. Anyway, uh, in the train, uh, they all start to worry a bit because Rarity... They've just been kidnapped. <laughs> no, they're not really kidnapped. But anyway, uh, Rarity is worried because, oh, uh, does she have enough time to weave the silk scarf, whatever it is that she's doing. And uh, Applejack is worried if F Big Mac can sort out all the orders because I got no idea how you do not know what is what. So that's one thing. And It's a box with an identical label on it. This... They're all bearing the same label. It's not Big Mac's fault. That's why you open it before you give. Like, make sure. You don't spoil, you don't tamper with the contents in front of the customer. They want to receive pure, unopened, yes. pr prom promising sanitary conditions, even though we know that's butkus. I know, but anyway, uh, we see that Fluttershy is worried because her pets or her uh, birds that she set off doesn't have the snacks that she promised them. So she's going to look in the uh, train cart for snacks. And Rainbow Dash here is... Uh, worried that the Wonder Balls meeting is well, the Wonder Ball meeting. She is worried about that, so she floats off to the, where was it again? I forgot the place that she's going. The Wonder Ball Academy. The train camp? Yeah, Wonder Ball Academy. <clears throat> I think it's the Wonder Balls training camp. I think is the. Well, honestly, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting, but I don't really know. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, according to the wiki, it says uh, Wonderbolts Academy. So let's go with that one. So she dashes off to Wonderbolts Academy, uh, asking where are the group. And since she's not there, the group thought that she uh, met the uh, Cantalot. So she has to go to Cantalot now. So after Twilight saying, what could possibly go wrong? The train is stopped by sheeps. Oh, God. Those dang sheep. Again with the sheep. Wow, what Indeed. is it with the sheep blocking the trains? They, they're, they're protesting because they want the same civil right that the ponies have, but they're idiots. Or, you know, it's just the money shakedown, the fleecing of equestrian. <laughs> uh, please. But anywho, uh, after all that's done, it's, the, it's nearly sunset and Twilight made it to the castle in time. Uh, Princess Celestia and Luna ask Twilight, are you okay? Do you need time to recover? And we hear the music playing. And they both say, okay, breaks over. Get out there, champ, and knock them dead. Celestia and Luna go out there to buffer the crowd, to hype out the crowd for Princess Twilight, the new ruler of Equestria. And over here, we get to see, we get to see all of the uh special guest appearance from 
uh, the student six to King Rutherford to the dragons. Then we see uh, Capper and Gilda and uh, Fizzlepop and also Sakura. I mean, this is a really awesome shot. I love this. I really love this. So once that's done, uh, Rarity comes over, gives the shawl to Twilight and spiders are on board. So yay. Uh, Twilight stumbles and everybody gasps. But she's okay. She's okay. So the two princesses uh, take off their crown and meld it into one to become Twilight's new crown. And let's just say that me going through everything here is a disservice to the episode. So I'm going to sum it up in a few words. Whatever could go wrong can go wrong from the spider scaring the birds, the, rain, the wonder bolts uh, misinterpreting the signal to Gummy setting off explosions at the wrong time to Twilight almost falling down and killing herself on the first day to the apple cider becoming apple sauce. So yeah, her, what you call this, coronation is not the best. And I'm going to, should I pause? Yes, I'm going to pause here. So uh, Silver, what do you think? Well, okay, with Rarity and the uh, Star Spiders, for star one, I'm actually kind of pleased that for once the Star Spiders served a purpose. Ever since season four, I've wondered. <laughs> it seems just wrong. They're there and they don't serve a purpose. But Rarity has them working in a little sweatshop. <laughs> They've got little little uh, wheels and, uh, and uh, wow, sewing machines. And I'm just like, Rarity, are they being paid fair wage? Are you giving them breaks? I would say that cage has been open because there's spider webs everywhere, but, well, <laughs> situation being what it is. Yeah, well, they're spiders, so it makes sense to have spider webs. But I'm just like, Rarity, what are you doing? <laughs> Fair labor practice. Uh, but anything that can go wrong does go wrong, and that's... You know it's coming. You know it's going to happen, so of course you just want to see it. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're only... Uh, leaving the Benny Hill Museum, the chase scene, and yeah, there, there's a lot of missing stuff. But the simple fact is, Gummy will kill us all. <laughs> oh, yeah, Gummy. Gummy. Gummy will kill us all. Oh, boys. Really? That's all I got. I, it's funny because you, you know it's coming. You're just like, oh, this is going to be horrid. <laughs> I know. Uh, Let me drink your tears. <laughs> Oh, by the way, anywho, Terra, what about you? I mean, not really much to say, because as soon as you see Twilight kidnaps her friends, you know that it's going to go wrong, because Verity still needs to finish her dress, and everyone needs to finish what they're doing, and Applejack can't even help her own brother, although it is kind of her fault for using the same stamp. She could at least use different colored stamps, like use the red apple stamp for this one, a blue apple stamp for that one, but no, she uses all the same colors. But I... One little detail that I do like is that Spike lost his fear of spiders. Because when Rarity shows the spiders, he's being like, Look, look at my new project! And instead of Spike being scared of them, now he's just like, Ooh, look at the spiders! <laughs> That's good. That's good. I, I totally forgot about that one. It was as forgotten as the star spiders themselves back in Castlemania. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> uh, and... Exactly, and speaking of that, I also remember too, someone made a comment uh, when we were talking about the Big Mac question, and someone mentioned the comment saying, well, what about Cranky Matilda? No one mentions them, and, it's, and I spawn, well, because the show doesn't bring them up, so why should we? That, that's true, that's true. I remember that one. Awesome commenter, awesome commenter. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, the, here's the problem with the show. We, we have, like, what? Nine years worth of content, and Cranky and Matilda appeared in season 2 and recently appeared in episode 100 I forgot that was what season 5 was it? yes I think so yeah so there's a huge gap and after season 5 uh, they're not really acknowledged in fully except in a few episodes like the uh, season 9 episode where Twilight was playing a game what was that game called again? what was it called? Trivial oh Trivia Trot? yeah something like that yeah 
So there's there's that there, but in all honesty, not really acknowledged. And if you see the crowd of ponies, we, we get to see uh, Twilight's fanboy. Uh, what was his name again? I forgot. Star Chaser. Star Chaser? Really? Yes. Huh. All right. So we get to see him there. And th that's a cool callback because when Twilight fell, he's the only one to uh, hold his face in sh utter shock. While the rest of the ponies are... Oh no, <laughs> especially Tree Hugger. Uh, Tree Hugger's like, oh no. <laughs> it's like, dude. <laughs> but yeah. Bummer. But yeah. <clears throat> well, sorry, Tara, for uh, cutting. Oh no, I, I was done. Oh, okay, cool. So anywho, uh, let's carry on. So in the future, we get to see Don uh, realizing or guessing that, oh, this is the part where you and your friends fall out of friendship and drifted apart because your coronation was a utter failure and whatnot and then before she could come to the conclusion uh we see pinkie pie comes in with her daughter and then we get to see rarity with a gray mane in her with a gray line in her mane and we, we get to see all the gang coming back. And we, a very interesting one here is Applejack and Rainbow Dash. S people have speculated that, or people have said that they're a married couple because they're arguing like one. I would love to believe it, but I feel, oh man, deep in my heart, I want to believe it. But there's a part of me that says they could be just bickering like normal friends. Eh. I mean... For me, I wouldn't say they're a couple per se. I'd say they're more roommates, like just living together. Yeah, I mean, that's one way to look at it also, but... I know some people, they like say they move out of their house and they live with their friends. So that's like, that's just me. Yeah. I'm not saying that they are roommates or that they're a couple. That's just me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's besides the point. I'm going to put that for later. Anyway, carrying on, we get to see Fluttershy. Fluttersh wow, Fluttershy has grown gracefully and has taken up with this court like she is mm, I, I i have a strong feeling that they're married yay so anywho uh Luster Dawn sees all of her friends appear and wait what you guys are all friends and stuff like wait, wait, wait what and twilight just explains in a flashback so the coronation was a total bus uh whatever could go wrong gone wrong and at least it's over at, at least the coronation's over because well uh from this point on everything's gonna be rainbows and ponies whatever it is or a rainbow pony <laughs> yes yes starlight comes in saying that uh, congratulations on the coronation uh, <laughs> is it wasn't not that bad like it wasn't that bad but anyway, I got you this uh, going away present. If you ever feel uh, lonely or uh, sad or want to remind you of your friends, here is a memory book. And it is all of the past accomplishments that Twilight and her friends uh, managed to do. Uh, in said book, there's a clip show of what has gone by. And... I'm going to put a pin on that one for later because uh, the book has its own story arc. So anywho, uh, they all talk and hug and, you know, just says that uh, you guys are the best. And you know what? From this day onwards, I'm going to make a rule where every one moon, we're going to meet up and rule Cantalot together. Yeah. Princess Celestia comes in and says, you know what, there's a really good plan. I, I, I approve, I approve. And Luna says, I, I hope you guys could visit us at, uh, where was it again? Silver Shoals? Yeah, Silver Shoals. Because that's where we're going to hang out, yow. And they all have a good hug. And well, in the future, Luster Don just says, wait, you guys do this 
every moon like hang out with each other just to rule Equestria and the group says yeah th th we've been doing this uh, since the day that we said we're going to do then that's how we protect Equestria deal with whatever that's trying to hurt it and with that Luster says you know what uh, there's a lot of work in friendship and I don't mind doing work but I got no idea where to go and we start off with a song where Twilight tells Luster where to go and they teleport to Ponyville and you know what this is going to be a montage of awesomeness but I'm just going to go through and point out some of the things I, I noticed that are really cool you mind? Oh, go ahead knock yourself out alrighty then so we teleport to Ponyville and we see uh, let's see um, who is this three ponies uh, Diamond Tiara Silver Spoon and uh, Twist Twist was it her name? Uh, Silver Spoon Silver Spoon and Twist right that's the other uh, pony uh, Twist um... yes Twist the with the red hair and the candy cane yeah yep they all grown up pretty well like wow so there there we get to see Derpy who looks a bit older and uh under Derpy we see Lyra and Bonbon they're awesome too then, they're married yep, now yep. we saw their wedding photo true that's yep. true uh, we see Sugar Cube Corner and we get to see a grown-up version of Pound and Pumpkin Cake and that's so cool we, we get to see who uh, Pinkie Pie married and gosh it's a cheese sandwich but the the thing that worries me is gummy gummy's huge and <laughs> silver would you agree that they uh highlight gummy and stretch him out he still looks like a baby alligator just super sized so <laughs> i have no idea what devil witchcraft is involved in this <laughs> so true uh but anywho we get to see the wonder balls and I, I feel like there's some of the ponies that we've seen before. Yes, no? I'm not sure. I mean, they would probably be like Colts and Phillies when we saw mm, them. Probably. But anywho, we get to we, we go to the School of Friendship where we see some of the other... Uh, some of the... Sorry. Some of the students are now uh, professors or lecturers. Uh, Silver Stream is a lecturer there. And we see Hitmare, uh, uh, Starlight, and also Vice Principal Sunburst. And yeah, we, we get to see some of the students there. They're teaching. Oh, Trixie is looking rather cool. Uh, the CMCs are lecturers there too. Uh, we see what else? Uh, some of the students have grown. Uh, we get a Kirin now in the class. So that's cool. Uh, what else? Uh, Still no buffalo or uh, mm, diamond dogs. Uh, We're still working yeah, on that. Like like Spike said, uh, the cats and dogs, they're working on it. And the buffalo? Uh, not sure, not sure. Maybe they're in Appaloosa. Who knows? But anywho, uh, we get to see Ocellus and Smolder uh, hanging out. And, oh, man... I, I'll point that out soon enough. Then we get to see the Apple Farm, uh, where we get to see uh, Big Mac and uh, Sugar Bell uh, hang out for a bit. And we get to see the dogs. We know they had babies. <laughs> Big Mac and Sugar Bell had a kid. So that's cool. A cult. And the, oh wow, the, the whatchamacallit, this, the color of the coat does not match the parents that's all i have to say well it kind of does yeah i i have to disagree with you there norman not much i mean i don't know i mean it feels like the purple on that one is too dark but if you look on sugar bell's mane there's a, a piece of her mane that's pretty much dark and it matches the sun's colors yeah. and the sun has big, big max hair color and eyes I can't. he's a little he's a little lighter maybe closer to pear butter but he has his grandmother's eyes okay okay Hair. 
Hmm, my bad. And we get to see Rarity's boutique where Yona and Vincent are hanging out. And th- th- this... Yona and Vincent. But... Yona and Vincent. I just like that you identify him by his voice actor. <laughs> I-, I know Sandbar, but since Tara reminded me, I-, I had to go with the joke, you know. <laughs> but anywho, uh, they're there. They're hanging out. And I always wonder, why is Sandbar there? Like, is he? Because they might be married. Ah, that is that is cool. That is cool. It is rare for a high school romance to work out so well, but it can happen. True, true. And we see the uh, Fluttershy's animal sanctuary flourishing, and the spawn demon has made babies. Ugh. Yes, I believe the uh, general. Uh, yes, but anywho, <laughs> uh, this goes there too, and we have a flashback, and we see that Twilight is sending Dawn away to mingle with friends. We get to see well, her starting friends is a Griffin, a Yak, a Kirin, and a Earth Pony, and ah, uh, let's hope that. They go on to become great, great friends. And with that, the book closes to the end. Uh, so anywho, Silver, uh, what do you think? And also final thoughts. Well, uh, how to put this? Because there's, there's mixed feelings. There's a great enjoyment in seeing all these characters as sort of a grand farewell. I especially like where the main six are dancing through what starts as an empty screen but they fill it with life and color and friends. I also appreciate that when Twilight uh, has her scene, we get to see both Sunset and Flash Sentry. Because for all the brouhaha, they are a part of this. True, true. But uh, Flash is blocked. <laughs> Flash is really, really blocked. <laughs> well, I mean, not everyone... Man, everyone gets a little... I don't think he's that blocked. Oh, yeah. The, oh, the he's not that block- blocked. Yeah, I mean he's not he, he can't quite make the moves on the princess in the in the flashback. That's okay. Yeah. But I I see the only pony that's being blocked is uh Fizzle Pop. She's she's nowhere to be seen. Like the wiki page doesn't really show her that well. <laughs> well, that's okay. I mean she got to be present at the coronation too. Ah, true, true. Anyway, uh, so enjoying seeing all this, all the again, I view this as a what if. This is the only bit of media that delves in Ponyville's future. And one of my experiences in entertainment in general is that if you're jumping into the future, it's not a guarantee. I've, see, I've seen futures averted many a time. But this is a good future, so I hope it's not. But there is also a slight artificial sense running through this. Because you want to check in on as many characters as possible, but you're limited to two venues. Therefore... You know, I noticed that everything's kind of static. The character, there's no new characters beyond like background reveals, like the, the new Wonder Bolts, because you don't want to have your audience saying, hey, who's that? What's going on there? So, of course, Pinky marries a cheese sandwich, the one who she's had the most interaction with. No one else has found a, a new spouse that we didn't see during the series because that would just confuse people. And uh, characters stay in Ponyville, even though there's reason for them to go beyond, especially the students. And they're just like, okay, I get it. You, You want to check in. You want us to see how they're doing. But a part of me says, you know, if in an episode that talks about life is about changes, Ponyville has remained rather static. Heck, it hasn't even had the same burst of architecture as Canterlot. So I just find I just feel like there's a certain limit in place right now, which is why I view it as a what if, because there's no X factor, there's no unknown. Perhaps Gallus is the biggest surprise because it's like, whoa, how'd this happen? Why did this happen? It'd be interesting to know how this happened. But such is left to our imagination. But all in all, like I while it sounds like I'm complaining a great deal, I did enjoy this glimpse into what I consider possible future and just getting to see Twilight 
adapting to the role of princess and seeing such a parallel between uh luster dawn and twilight's past self i did i kind of laughed wow that was an easy fix i wish twilight you had to arrange an end of the world she's like wow i didn't even have to get kidnapped for that lesson <laughs> i've totally sur i've totally surpassed celestia uh well yep yeah, that is true that is true Meanwhile, Celestia is off in retirement going, I'm annoyed now and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, boys. But anywho, that's my two cents. Uh, all right. Anyway, Tara, what about you? So well, I agree with Silver. You think that they would change up Ponyville a bit because after all these years, you think that they change up a bit of the buildings, you know, maybe have a different kinds of bridges or something. But no, everything looks the same. The only thing that's different is the way the ponies look and how some of them are older and how there's new ponies to see. But I do like, like, it's a very emotional part here where another thing too that I'm pretty sure made a lot of people emotional is that uh, they don't see the characters they grew up with, like, um, how do I put this? Like, say you don't see Mr. and Mrs. Cake because they're no longer there because they probably passed away. Same with Granny Smith and Grandpa, uh, or Grandpa. That's whoa, 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 whoa. You say the cakes are dead? I mean, Granny, sure, she went to live on a farm upstate, if you know. Uh. What I mean. But where are you getting that the cakes are dead? Oh, I didn't, I wasn't implying. I was saying they could possibly be. <laughs> that, that's rather overt implying <laughs> in fact that, that that's just flat out stating yeah i mean like great like stop trying to kill the takes cakes for tara <laughs> they're the only good couple <laughs> i can't help but i have a sweet tooth then why do you want to kill the cakes <laughs> does do, do the tears of the innocent make taste that much sweeter yes <laughs> well whoa i'm learning new things about you today <laughs> Anywho, carry on. But I do like how the, I do like how they end it, and this whole episode. It, it, like I said, with the whole flashback thing, they could have, I guess, made it its own episode. But they have to fill the time somehow. But they they really ended on a good note, especially with showing all the characters at the end and all the characters that we've been throughout the years with the episodes and the seasons. And then the ending with the book is just so touching, and it shows that you know the very first episode, season one, started with the book opening, and now the tale is finished. Yeah, that that was a nice touch, and and now we cry. Yeah. <laughs> and as for me, uh, as for me, oh man, like going into this episode, I was not ready. Like complaints that you guys have with Ponyville, uh, I agree slash disagree because I agree that Ponyville should advance and should at least have some new architecture. But at the same time, too, I understand why they didn't do it because budget and time. So, kind of understandable. But uh, it's one of those things where I agree and disagree at the same time. Oh, boy. The story here where we get introduced to Luster Dawn here is very interesting because uh, Luster here is the, the exact copy of Twilight when she was young and thought that friendship was kind of a waste of time. And like Silver mentioned, Twilight solved this problem easily without getting kidnapped or without sending or without pushing Duster Dawn to an alternate universe. Uh, she just sang songs and tell her story and boom, she wants to make friends now. So that's good. And Luster Dawn... Mm, She's an interesting character, but I, I don't have much to say. He, this is where the part where if the story continues on, we get to see Luster's story, I hope. Um, that's maybe in the retrospective, probably. But overall, I, I do like the story. I, I do like how the show is progressing, how it, it wraps everything up. And the ending for some characters especially what uh applejack and rainbow dash uh, some people say that they are a married couple which could be possibly true who knows uh the show doesn't sorry uh hasbro doesn't seem to shy away from that with <laughs> with recent merchandising with the 
uh, pride shirt that's on pop something shop online. I, I do love to see what Fluttershy and Discord. I do hope that they're a married couple, but if not, that's cool. And I just love seeing where the characters end up. It's one of those things where we always wonder what happened to X character in the future because for us as fans of the show, we're invested. We spent nine years following the characters. We we can relate. We, uh, we laugh with them and so on. And uh, seeing how they end up kind of completes the show the the just the emotions and also with the book uh, yes uh funny story about the book there's a clip show called uh my little pony friends forever was it or whoa friendship is forever friendship is forever there you go. Yeah? friendship is forever was it friendship is yeah, forever okay, friendship is forever so uh it, it, it's additional content for the series that's yay uh, i did talk to the guys about oh should we uh, watch this one to review the whole thing as a whole but upon re-watching the new content is very abysmal and there's just a lot of clip shows like it's not worth getting into you would you agree silver i mean you could you could talk about all six seven uh no six uh clip shows in one sitting just going over the new stuff we have we have managed to talk about every single episode in this series as far as i know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so really uh, talking about a clip show would feel redundant yep yep especially when we're just covering the new stuff like the new stuff is just what uh, a total of probably 10 minutes long probably well, per episode, yeah, yeah, ten minutes per episode at the yeah. most, at the most. But anywho, uh, like I was saying, the the show is just awesome. And with the closing of the books, ends an era. I do wish that they finish up at season ten to make it a decade, but uh, it's almost a decade is still good. Well, gotta give the comics something to do. So with this, or oh, with the closing of the book. My Little Pony, Friendship's Magic, the cartoon for TV has ended. And, oh man. Until the next one. Eh, true, true. But this one is special. Like, this one is special. I'm, I'm going to hold my tongue for a bit because retrospective is there for a reason. So, anywho, um, Silver, what are we going to do next week? A retrospective. Ah, about what? Of My Little Pony, the show that ended. Ah, that's... Hmm. <laughs> That's coincidence? Yes, Starbed, your your subtle <laughs> setup has paid off. We cannot keep up with your 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 clever machinations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, be, be, uh, just to complete this one, uh, like as per usual, the pony shows. Uh, got leaked out early and it got leaked out way in advance but anywho I did a video reaction feeling about the show and yeah man that, that one was really emotional but anywho um, I'll probably release that for the YouTube because time's up and whatnot but probably added content for YouTube who knows so yeah, um, next week, retrospective of this show. So yeah, see, uh, I, I guess we'll catch you there. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, lots of places. You can find me on uh, Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me under Silver Quill on Ko-fi and Patreon. Maybe we can support my videos. My, those videos are located on YouTube. Just do a search for After the Factor Silver Quill. You can also catch me on Fridays as I do a Fulfillment Friday live stream, working on artwork with a guest host 
as we jibber jabber. And I haven't gotten to post on Equestria Daily in a while because it's been, well, rather, it's been a curious time. But I think I've heard that the Diamond Comics will try to start distributing again at the end of this month. And hopefully the comics will be back in action. Or I can get some editorials going on Wednesdays. Do check those out, guys, because they're a really good read. So anyway, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tartar1324. Or they could just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page and my Ko-fi page. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvaLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Knight, Tristan, and also Master Black. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. Oh god, the episode's finished! <laughs> well then, I, I guess it's time for me to leave. Bye! See ya! <laughs> oh, there, there, Norman. Oh. <laughs>